All right. Welcome, everyone. Live. This is the first for the CMTA. Uh, so please bear with us. Um, presentation that we've uh, here at the same have one of the this all, you know, working the working the magic that I would like to in, uh, introduce you. Uh, Ted has been a certified. Oh no, I think we may have lost Gina. Maybe. Oh. And with that, I am back. Did, did I drop? I, yes, I'm back. It's like magic. <laughs> So, um, but uh, so he is supporting the the customers like uh, those of us living with CMT for, for all their orthotic needs. So, um, just a quick note: if you have any questions during Ted's presentation, you can type them in the comment section, and they will be answered at the end of the presentation. So, with that, Ted, I am going to turn it over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Gina, for the introduction. And um, yes, thank you to the CMT Association uh, for inviting us to do this. It's really a, an honor to be able to present to your members. Um, we, we certainly appreciate the opportunity. And hopefully we have some information here for you folks today um, that you can take and, and you know, use uh, moving forward as you're kind of experiencing your journey with CMT um, or whatever um, pathology you might happen to have. I am going to share my screen right now. I've got a little presentation that I want to um, put together for you here. Um, so again, my name is Ted Friedman. I am a certified orthotist. Um, I joined Autobach about seven years ago now um, and just kind of been doing a lot of the clinical education and training that goes along with our C-Brace system. Um, so... I can get my, there we go. Um, so when we look at um, a long leg brace or a KAFO, which is a knee ankle foot orthosis, um, traditionally in the past, our options were to lock your knee, um, which meant that you stood up and some mechanism would lock and your knee would be locked for both stance phase as well as swing phase. So while you were walking, your knee would not bend at all, um, which is, really inherently causes a lot of um, compensations to occur. And so a, a patient would, or you would actually walk with a lot of compensatory motions and you'd put a lot of undue stress onto like your lower back, um, your other leg, things like that. Um, there's a couple of other options in there where we take the center of rotation and move it posterior. So that is actually, it does actually move it just provides a very, very limited amount of support, um, and it really requires the user to really concentrate and really think about every step in order for that to actually be effective for you. And then we also have something called an SCO or a stance phase control orthosis which is really similar to a light switch, right? So if you turn the light switch on, that means the lock is locked and your knee is locked, it will not bend. If you turn the light switch off, it makes it free motion, so your knee bends freely, um, which can provide a better gait pattern, um, but it's not exactly going to get us back to more of a physiologic or natural normal gait. Um, it's better than nothing, um, but certainly now with C-Brace, we have a much better option out there. And what we're saying is that the C-Brace is a whole new class or a whole new category of long leg brace for KAFO. Um, so it's a stance and swing phase control. So it's monitoring and controlling both stance and swing phase um, as you're walking. 
Um, so this stance and swing phase controlled orthosis uses a microprocessor to control that, right? So we've got a microprocessor that is getting inputs put into it and then sending outputs to provide varying levels of resistance to the amount of knee flexion that the device provides. Um, there's a high level of safety because that flexion resistance is already active during swing phase extension. So as your leg is coming forward, um, as you're taking that step and moving that leg forward, the C-brace is already going to be providing a high level of resistance to your knee bending. So what that means is if you catch your toes on something, the brace is already trying to stop your knee from bending, right? It's already providing that support to you. Um, it is comfortable also when walking on ramps and stairs. Traditional devices, either you had to avoid ramps and stairs um, or it was very difficult and you had to do a lot of compensatory motions to get the, the device to function on ramps or stairs. And because it uses this microprocessor, it does adapt to changes in your walking speed, right? So if you start walking faster, it will start reacting faster for you. So um, when we talk about microprocessor control, we have <clears throat> sensors <clears throat> that are monitoring what's happening. And then we have a microprocessor that takes those inputs from those sensors and sends an output to an actuator. So the sensors send information to the microprocessor, which sends information to the hydraulic valves and that provides those varying levels of resistance. Another way to think about this is um, what happens if you're cooking dinner and you go to grab a hot pan. If you think about that, there are sensors in your hand that send a signal up to your microprocessor, right, which is your brain. And your microprocessor, your brain, sends an output to your muscles telling your muscles to let go, that thing's hot. C-brace works in a very similar fashion. There are sensors that tell the device where your knee is and what's happening with your thigh um, and what amount of resistance to knee flexion that device needs to provide at that moment in time during your gait cycle. Um, so when it comes to C-brace, we've come a really long way, right? So we've taken technology that you can see on the left there, which is a C-leg that was actually attached to a KAFO. That's kind of like the very first version, so to speak, of a C-brace. So it's using technology from our prosthetics, which is very old technology, right? It's been around for 20 years plus um, and, and has really advanced and proven technology. And we've just taken that technology and we've applied it now to a long leg brace. Um, so that's really where the kind of the, the idiot evolution of the C-brace. Um, so who is the C-brace for? All right, so the C-brace is for anyone who has leg paresis or paralysis. So anybody that has um, weakness in those thigh muscles, right? That's really the where the C-brace is really going to provide the most difference for you is if you have weakness in your thigh muscles, um, it's really going to be able to provide some support to that for you. You do have to be able to stabilize your torso and stand up, um, but once you can do that, you really might be a candidate for a C-brace. I mean, you have to be able to advance your limbs forward, um, so that's another requirement. The C-brace doesn't walk for you, but it does allow you to walk in a more physiologic or a more natural manner. So what are some of the benefits that the C-brace offers? Um, so this safe and controlled knee flexion under load or under weight bearing, right? So that's what's different about C-brace. That's what's not been able to be done in, in orthoses up until now. And what that does is that gives us the, allow, uh, the ability to support you from standing to a sitting position. It gives us the opportunity to support you as you're going downstairs, um, it gives us the ability to get back what's called loading response. So when your leg is in front of you, your knee should bend a little bit. And in a traditional orthosis, it would be locked straight. It also gives us stumble recovery, right? So you're able to actually, if you catch your toes, it gives you some time to get your other leg around and prevent yourself from actually falling. It does operate on uneven terrain. It does operate on ramps, whereas traditional devices probably didn't operate so well in those, those situations. 
Um, it does give us the ability to, again, walk downstairs step over step. We can see the gentleman in the picture here who is able to actually descend stairs in a more controlled manner. He's not simply falling down the stair and catching himself. He's descending that stair in a controlled manner. When we talk about that microprocessor control and how it, it kind of acts in the similar fashion to what our brain would, um, so what that does is that actually means we need less concentration um, while we're walking. We don't have to think about every step. We don't have to think about every obstacle um, because the brace is there constantly monitoring and constantly kind of doing what our brain possibly used to do. So there is a higher level of safety while walking because um, the brace is constantly monitoring what's happening and adapting what it's doing based on the inputs that it gets. It's also safer because we've already set that high level of resistance and eflection during your swing phase, right? Um, there's less compensation with that contralateral side. And remember I talked about how in a traditional lock device, you might have to do some compensatory motions. Um, by allowing that knee on that affected side to, to function more physiologically, we actually take some of the stress off of the contralateral side. And certainly for bilateral users, this could be very beneficial because they were actually doing compensatory motions on both sides. Um, so reducing those compensatory motions um, is definitely going to be beneficial. And with the new system of the C brace, we're actually able to walk backwards without any problems, um, which has really been beneficial for, for users that are switching to it. I think it's important to understand that while it is great and it does do a lot of things, there are some situations where C brace is not going to be appropriate. And, and these are just some of the some of the things that we're saying are, are contraindications, right? So medium to severe spasticity. So if you really don't have um, the ability to control your muscles from firing at, at all, and they're very, very tight and very, very tense, um, you might not be a candidate for a C brace. Um, if you can't actually move your leg in front of each other, um, moving your legs in front of each other, you're probably not a candidate for a C brace. Um, contractures of some joints that can't be reduced through some physical therapy or, or other means. Um, and then uh, right now we do have a body weight limit of 275 pounds. So that is our, our upper limit there. Um, and you can't have a leg length discrepancy of greater than six inches. Um, orthoprosthesis is on there also. Um, you, you can't be a below knee amputee and also wear a C brace on the same leg at this time. Um, so those are some things that, you know, maybe if you're not sure if you fall into some of those categories, it, it's probably best to just get into a professional and, and see a professional who can evaluate and see where you're at with, with some of these things. And if you do have them or if you don't have them, or if you do have them, if there's something that can be done to kind of reduce it and, and make it so that maybe that goes away and that's not a contraindication for you anymore. Um, also wanted to talk about what the C-brace is and what, it, what, it, what it's not gonna do, right? So it's not going to push you up a set of stairs. It's not going to push you up out of a chair. It is passive support. Um, so it's not actively pushing on you or actively going to get you out of a chair or things like that. Um, it's also not what we would call um, submersion proof, right? So you can't submerse it in water and, and go swimming with it or, or things like that. Um, splash water at it is okay. If you happen to be wearing it and you get caught in a rainstorm, that's okay. Um, we just do want you to let it dry out. Um, and, and certainly we don't want water jets shooting at it, right? So, um, and then it's also intended more for activities of daily living. Um, so it's not intended for like what some of our users try to do in it and, and try to run and things like this. Um, that's really overloading the system. It's not really intended for that. It's really mainly just meant to kind of get you through your activities of daily living. And then if you have specific activities that are maybe a little higher activity levels, maybe you can talk to your orthotist about some other options that, that you can use for those activities. Um, do want to point out that if you do decide to pursue a C-brace, Gait training and therapy is going to be critical to your success, right? So finding a good therapist who can really teach you how to utilize the C-brace and how to get the most benefit out of it is going to be beneficial. Um, so some of the exercises, we say it's without the C-brace, but that's, that's really not true. You do actually have the C-brace on during these activities. It's just more, how do you put the C-brace on? How do you stand up in a C-brace? How do you sit down in a C-brace? And then the specific exercises with the C-brace would be things like, 
how do I get it to allow me to walk freely? How do I get the device to allow me to walk backwards? How do I get it to allow me to go up and down stairs? So things that you'll actually functionally use the sea brace. And then some of those more advanced things, right? Like how do I get up off of the ground if I happen to fall or, or how do I you know, do specific activities that perhaps I wanna do in the sea brace? Um, so I wanted to show just a couple of videos real quick, um, just some, some different examples of people. Um, you can see the gentleman there on the left-hand side. He's in a traditional locked KFO, and you can see kind of his hip kind of moving in these unnatural kind of manners. His shorts kind of tend to pull and, and tug at him. Um, and you can see it. Uh, he's really on that video on the left. He's really kind of got that death grip on that parallel bar, really trying to make sure that he's holding on to it. Whereas when he's wearing the C brace, he's able to just guide his hand down that bar just in case he happens to need it, not really relying on that upper arm or that upper extremity to help him down that ramp. Same thing in, a, in the locked KFO on the left there, you can see his shorts kind of bounce every time he hits that next step. Um, whereas with the C brace, it's in a much more controlled manner. And I think the important thing in this video is if you watch his eyes in that locked KFO, he's looking down at the ground. When he's wearing the C brace, he's able to pull his eyes up and look at forward at where he's going. So those are some of the benefits that we're seeing with the C brace. Um, we've got a, another lady here who, um, is wearing a C brace and then she's also wearing a, a next gear tango, which is kind of an advanced ankle joint that we've put on the C brace for her. Um, you can definitely tell with her, it's, it's very obvious right away how much better she walks with the C brace and, and with that tango joint. Um, you know, without that orthosis on when she's using those forearm crutches, you know, she is really, really concentrating on every single step that she's having to take. And same thing, right? She's looking down at the ground immediately in front of her rather than looking out at, at where she's trying to go, right? So when she's got that C brace on, you can see a lot more confidence in her ability to get, you know, from one point to the next. Um, typically going downstairs, again, you know, really, this is part of therapy and learning how to do this, right? She didn't, wasn't able to do this the first day she got the sea brace, but as she's gotten used to it and become used to it, um, you know, she's definitely able to go up and down stairs in a much more controlled manner. Um, so those are some of the benefits. This is also a gentleman who was um, injured in, I believe, Afghanistan, possibly Iraq. Um, you know, this was his gait pattern um, when he presented to clinic, right? He had spent basically seven years in a wheelchair, um, really wasn't able to get around very well at all. So this, this required too much energy to walk, right? Um, so here he is the day that he got fit with his seat races. Um, now, granted, he is a, a master sergeant marine, so he's definitely got some core strength and, and definitely had some good physical therapy um, immediately after his injuries. But you can see doing quite well um, for his first day after having gotten sea braces. And here he is after a, a couple of weeks wearing sea braces and, you know, many obstacles on the ground. And we certainly would want to try and avoid those obstacles. Um, but, you know, he definitely felt comfortable enough to, to carry his daughter around on his shoulders after a, a couple of weeks and, and wearing his sea braces. Um, so those are some of the things that, that we've seen happen over time um, for sea brace users. Um, so I think it's important at this point for me to mention, you know, this, this rehabilitation team and, you know, you're the patient, right, and you have this team working around you, um, reach out to this team, right? So the assessment, step one there, that's, that's where we're going to interview you and see what, you know, what some of your goals are and what some of your challenges have been up to this point and in trying to determine if, if a C-brace is appropriate for you. Um, and we may send you to therapy first, right? We talked about contractures and things like that might be there. So we might have to kind of reduce some of those things before we actually start getting a C brace for you. Um, and then if we decide, hey, you know, C brace is right for you and, you know, we think you should proceed and, and everything's worked out, we actually decide, you know, what types of di um, different joints do we want to use at the ankle and, and, you know, what type of device do we actually want to make for you? We would take a cast of your leg. We would make a kind of a test shell first, um, just make sure everything fits. And then we would actually send that back and produce the actual C brace. And then we go to the fitting, right? So you are actually the day that you go to the, the orthotist and you actually get your C brace and we do some of the programming um, and go over some of the options with you. 
and then the the work begins right that's where that's where your work begins as the the patient there um, going to that training and going to that pt and learning how to use all the different features and functions of the c race um, and then of course you know quality checks and follow-ups to make sure that as you're going through the rehabilitation process we're actually making sure that that c race is doing everything that it can for you um, so I think, you know, at this point, if you're, if you're questioning, you know, well, you know, I don't know if I'm really a good candidate for a C brace or not, that's where really going to, if you have someone that you're getting braces through right now, I would recommend going to them and, and talking to them about C brace, um, you know, set up an appointment with them. Um, if you don't have any bracing um, person that you're working with right now, um, you can reach out to Autobach. We can make some recommendations for you, or you can reach out to your physician and they can make some recommendations for, for who you should go see for a C brace. Um, I do want to mention you know, in terms of, I'm sure it's a question that's out there, right? That insurance coverage, is it covered by insurance? Um, and each insurance plan is so different. It's, it's not a simple answer, right? So um, what I would recommend is, again, talking to your orthotist about your specific insurance plan and, and what the benefits might be. Um, and Autobach has a, a team of people that can help your orthotist determine, you know, what is going to be the cost for a C-brace and what is, you know, your insurance coverage for that C-brace. So, um, I, I like to say that, you know, the only person that's guaranteed to not get a C brace is the one that doesn't, doesn't explore it, right? Doesn't find out to see if, if it's a possibility for them. Um, and it's definitely a life-changing device. So it, it's worthwhile at least investigating to see, you know, if you are a good candidate for it and, and then if you can get it covered. Um, so want to just say thank you at this point. Um, I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen and you might just see me at that point. Um, but I'm going to take a look. It seems like maybe there were some questions that had come in. I'm going to start at the top. Um, so Daniel asked if this brace help move, helps to move the hips. Unfortunately, Daniel, no, um, it does not move your hips. It doesn't actually move anything for you. You have to be able to put the inputs into the brace to, to get the leg to come forward. Um, so it doesn't move the hips for you. Um, and so then what's the indication for use in CMT? Um, anything with quadricep weakness, right? So the quadriceps are the muscles on the front side of your leg that actually stabilize your knee. Um, and so if you tend to trip and fall, or if your knees tend to buckle underneath you, um, that would be the indication for use in CMT. Um, and then Kenneth, you asked about insurance coverage, which I, I believe, I hope I, I covered that well enough for you. Um, if you have follow-up questions about that, please, please let us know. Um, and looks like Rick and Lois asked, do these work for both leg weaknesses with CMT? Yes. So the C-brace can be um, used and worn bilaterally, so on both legs. So if both of your legs are weak, it, it can be worn on both. We do have many patients, as you saw David, um, you know, he wears them on both legs. Um, so if you do have weakness in both legs, we, we can certainly do both legs if, if that's clinically appropriate. Um, and then a couple of people asking about if this would help with MS. Yes, um, you know, uh, some MS patients, it really depends. MS is kind of a broad term um, for many different types. And so what I would say is it really depends on the type of MS you have and where you're at in your progression with MS. So again, I would recommend going to see an orthotist, um, especially if you have one that you've been working with for a while, they can kind of tell you know, where you were and where you're at, and maybe where you're gonna be um, to determine if you might be a good candidate for C braces. And then the next question I see is, are they available in Ontario, Canada? Yes, Autobach does have a, a whole team of people that works in Canada actually. Um, and I'm certain that they would be more than happy to re, uh, work with you on, on getting that in, in Canada. Um, they're available in Canada. I believe that some of the Canadian provinces have paid for them um, the way of the insurance. I'm not real familiar with the way the insurance works up there, but I, I believe they have had some covered by that. Um, so again, reach out to either whoever you're working with for your braces now or Autobot Canada would be happy to, to help you find a place to go if you don't have any. Um, 
again, I know that that insurance coverage is is that big question, right? So, um, you know, like I said, it, it really depends on the insurance that you have, and the best way to find out would be to go to an orthotist and and give them you know your insurance card and, and see what we can come up with. Autobach has a team of people that would would be happy to help with them. Um, our batteries and padding required. So most sea braces do have some padding on the inside and it is a removable padding so that it can be washed and you'll get two with it if you do that type. Um, so definitely, and then the battery is actually incorporated into it. So you don't have to switch batteries, but you do have to charge the battery. We typically recommend you charge it every night. Um, if you happen to miss a night, most people can get through that second day without um, having to charge it. Um, and yes, you can wear them on both legs. Is this brace indicated after muscle atrophy? Yes, yeah, so muscle atrophy is what this brace is indicated for, right? So if you had atrophy or weakness of those muscles on that front side of the leg, um, you know, definitely that, that can be what the C-brace is best at taking care of. Um, and then what causes CMT-induced contractures and how do we reduce them? So um, reducing contractures is tricky, right? Um, and, and so I would recommend physical therapy um, and starting there and starting with your doctor and a physical therapist um, and seeing what options there are for reducing those contractures if they are there. Um, contractures at the ankle typically aren't going to have a huge impact on C-brace. We can accommodate for those things. It's really the knees and the hips that the contractures become a problem. So um, if you have contractures at the ankle, we can usually accommodate for that because the C-brace doesn't, doesn't really care what's happening at your ankle. So we can do about anything we need to down there. Um, how does it work getting down and up from the floor? So that's kind of more that advanced physical therapy training, right? You know, how do I get down to the floor? How do I get back up off the floor once I'm there? Um, those are, are things that, you know, the sea brace can help you if you're, if you do want to intentionally go down to the ground, it can help you get down in a more slow and controlled manner. Um, it's not going to help you up off of the floor. Um, so there's some techniques that you kind of roll and, and use your upper extremities and do some things. So most therapists would be able to help you find ways that work best for you because each patient is going to be different in what works best for how to get up off of the floor. Um, so again, that cost question that goes back to the insurance coverage, right? It really depends on the insurance coverage and your insurance plan um, and then kind of their contracts with the different providers that are out there. Um, so how much does it cost? That's going to be a better question for the orthotist that you're working with. Um, they're going to be the ones that would be able to provide you with a, a cost estimate um, based on your insurance plan. Um, and then do you have to have a certain level of mobility to use these? Um, you do have to have um, the ability to advance your limb, right? So one of the early questions was, does it move your hips for you? No, it doesn't move your hips for you. So you have to be able to advance your one limb in front of the other. It's not going to do that for you. Um, and then we had a question about how much does one weigh? Um, a typical sea brace um, is somewhere between five to seven pounds. It really depends on what options are chosen for the ankle and the size of the patient, right? So a, a, a taller, larger gentleman, uh, this brace might weigh a little bit more than a, a shorter person or a skinnier person. Um, so, but typically around that five to seven pound range is, is what they weigh. Um, the microprocessor be... Okay, so can the microprocessor be transferred to new CAFOs if you outgrow the original? Uh, that's a great question. And yes, um, so if the, the joint unit itself is still functioning well and, and works well, and just you've outgrown or, or maybe you had a significant weight loss or some atrophy or something, we can make just new shells and the, the original microprocessor can be put onto the, the new shells. Um, and I apologize if I made it sound like you can't wear it daily. You certainly can wear this daily. It is intended for daily use, um, and it, but it's intended for daily living, right? So activities of daily living, um, not necessarily for like running and jumping and things like that. 
Um, it can be worn underneath clothing um, if you can find clothing that is big enough to get around it, um, which typically hasn't been too big of a deal or, or an issue. Um, many people choose just to wear it over their clothing because it is a little easier, um, but, but it certainly can be worn under clothing as, as long as there's you know, enough room. And some people have done you know, adding some um, Velcro closures on, or opening up the seam of a pant and adding a little Velcro or a little elastic in there to give them a little more room. Um, so if you know a seamstress, that, that's definitely something that can be done. Um, and then if you have to hyperextend, um, could these braces work? Absolutely. Um, so I always say that hyperextension is our friend with C-Brace. Um, so uh, we definitely have a lot of patients who are, are very strong hyperextenders who do very well in the C-Brace. Um, and then the atrophy question is that when you use any type of medical support, the muscles in the brace will weaken because the brace is actually doing the work. Um, so that's a very common misconception um, that, uh, if, that if you wear a brace that you will get atrophy. Um, the reality is that you're going to get the atrophy if you don't do anything. Um, and if you don't feel comfortable or confident in standing, and actually walking around, you're, you're less likely to do things. Um, so a brace doesn't, doesn't actually cause atrophy. The possible exception would be is if you put a locked ankle brace on maybe an NBA player, um, perhaps one muscle might get a little more weak than the other. Um, but when you have a pathology that is preventing your muscles from working, that's what causes the atrophy, not actually wearing a brace. Um, so wearing a brace, it's a common misconception. Um, it doesn't actually cause atrophy to occur. Um, actually, some studies have shown that if you're wearing a brace, you're more likely to do more things. And, and they've actually seen an increase in muscle size and, and muscle activity um, when people wear a brace frequently and, and feel comfortable. Um, and then do I know what an EMEG is? Yes. Uh, the, so there's many differences between the EMEG and a C-brace. Um, one of the, some of the most common ones are going to be that an EMEG doesn't do anything for you as you're sitting into a chair. An EMEG doesn't function as you're walking downstairs. An EMEG doesn't allow loading response to occur. So it's a less physiologic gait. Um, you have to get to full extension before your foot hits the ground in order for the EMEG to work with the C-brace. It doesn't matter where your leg is in space, it's actually working. Um, there's, a, there's quite a few more differences there with between the EMEG and the C-brace, probably too many to, to list tonight, but, um, but there's definitely a lot of advantages um, to the C-brace over the, the EMEG. Um, and have I seen insurance assist after they've already helped pay for a wheelchair in the past? Um, yes, I've seen some insurances um, assist after they have you know, paid for a wheelchair in the past. Um, uh, but again, that's going to be depending on your specific insurance situation. So I, I would definitely recommend that you get into to an orthotist and see um, what your specific plan says and, and what they've paid for in the past. But Typically, having paid for a wheelchair in the past should not exclude you from getting um, a C brace. Um, can they fit children? To an extent, yes, they can fit children. We've we've fit children as young as I believe twelve, maybe thirteen years old. Um, if they're too small, the joint might be a little too big. It might be a little too early for that. Um, but yeah, we've definitely fit some fairly young children with with a C brace. Um, and Kenneth asks, correct me if I'm wrong, but basically C-brace is designed to provide smart knee stability when the quadriceps have become weakened and ankle stability can also be improved and foot drop assistance can be provided. Yeah, no, Kenneth, that's a, that's a great summary, right, of what the C-brace is, right? So it's, it's smart knee stability, right? It, it's monitoring what's happening to your leg as you're going through the gait cycle. Um, providing varying levels of resistance, you know, more resistance when it's needed, less resistance when it's not needed. Um, and then that ankle stability, yeah, there's all kinds of options that we can do at the ankle, depending on what your specific needs are at the ankle. Um, so yes, we can definitely provide that, you know, foot drop support and, and you know, contractures of, of the ankle accommodations, things like that. Um, but yeah, no, that's, that's a great way of putting it. I might, I might borrow that, Kenneth. I like that smart knee stability. So, um, 
will these allow for driving a car? So um, each state has their own rules and regulations about driving a car with some sort of device on. So each state is gonna have a little different answer to that question. Um, I will tell you that we do have people that drive with a C brace on. Um, we also have people that aren't willing to drive with a C brace on. So um, it, it's really gonna be up to you. Uh, you can always, if you're not comfortable driving with them on, you can always get hand controls put on a car. And I know that's not always the best um, option, but but it's at least an option to get you around, right? And then what if your foot drop or ankle problem was on the opposite side of your knee problem? Um, so yeah, I mean, certainly we could do some sort of AFOs. Thanks, get it. We could do an AFO, so something just to control that foot drop or ankle problem on, on that side, and then a C brace on the other side, um, and, and just doing more maybe of a free motion ankle. Um, because if we don't need to control the ankle motion, then, then we won't. Um, so, and I appreciate that, Kenneth. I, I might use that. So, and then how do you trial the C-brace? Right. So, um, so a C-brace, there's actually a, a device that we have that we can put on you. And it's kind of, you know, it's got a couple different sizes of shells. It's got a joint unit. It's got some bars on the side and some adapters and things. Um, so we can actually put the device on you. And it's, it's similar to what a definitive would feel like, um, but it's kind of kind of bulkier and a little heavier than what the definitive is. So it's just giving us an idea of if the technology works for you and if you like what the technology is doing for you. So kind of a, a test run, so to speak, or a test drive of the C brace. Um, and you can do that with, with any orthotist in, in the you know country. So um, if you have someone that you're doing bracing with and and you say you want to have a meeting with them and, and tell them that you'd like to trial the C-brace if you're a candidate for it. And they'll, you know, they'll do some muscle testing and range of motion testing and you know, maybe ask you a few questions. And if they think you might be a candidate for it, um, they'll give us a call and we can get that, that trial device out to them um, and, and you can try it. So yeah, it's a great question, Lacey. Appreciate that. Any other questions out there? Okay. If the ankle on its own has no muscle tone, um, will this still work if the brace needs to be substantial enough to fully support it? Um, yeah, absolutely. So if you can't move your foot at all, you can't pick your toes up, you can't push them down, you can't pull them in or out, um, that's fine. C-brace can still be built to support that ankle in a manner that um, we can control it and, and support the ankle and then support the knee as well. Um, so yeah, much like a dead fish, that's, that's a good way of putting it. Um, yeah, no, I mean, absolutely, um, whatever we need to do to support the ankle, we can do that in conjunction with the C-brace um, knee support as well. So, yeah, no, that's a great question. Lots of great questions. So, any um, contacts in Australia? I, I, so, uh, we certainly do have Autobach in Australia. I don't personally have any contacts there, but we do have a lady working here in the U.S. that is actually practiced in Australia in the past, so um, she may be able to, to find someone for us. So, um, okay, so you're an amputee. Will it work with your prosthesis? Um, so we can't put the C-brace on the same side as your prosthesis. So if your prosth prosthesis is on your right leg, we could do a C-brace on your left leg, um, but we can't do one on the right leg, uh, you know, on the amputation side. Um, so if it's opposite legs, then yes, um, but unfortunately, if it's all on one leg, then no. Um, and can your physical therapist come to your appointment? Absolutely. Um, I, I would encourage your physical therapist to, to come to your appointment, um, especially for during the trial of the C brace, right? So if you've already kind of determined that you might be a good candidate for it, 
uh, but we want to see, you know, does it actually work for you? Do you like what it does for you? Um, your therapist can certainly come to that appointment. I recommend therapists come to the definitive fitting appointment when you actually get the C-brace. Um, and then we do have some training that uh, we provide for therapists. So if it's a therapist that's not familiar with C-brace, uh, we can provide them some training to get them familiar with it as well. Um, so definitely recommend having a therapist come because they're going to be, they're going to be come your friend after you get a C brace. That's for sure. Um, cause there is quite a bit of training that goes along with it. And then does it help with balance? Um, so yes, it can help with balance, right? So if you're having some concerns with balance due to muscle weakness, then yes, it, um, it also really depends on what types of balance issues you're having, um, but certainly it can help with it. I've also seen it where it really doesn't because, um, you know, just the type of imbalance that you have, it's just not going to do that. So that's where that trial orthosis can really help us and tell us, um, you know, whether or not you're a good candidate for that. Um, and the C and C brace, what does it stand for? I'm, I'm actually not sure. Um, I've heard conflicting stories on what that C stands for, so I don't want to say because I don't know for sure. Um, and then a question about, is the foot plate custom molded or crane at B for supporting correcting the notorious CMT-induced capovarus foot deformity? Yeah, definitely. So CMT, yes, very famous for Noah or having that um, capovarus, so that really high arch, the ankle rolls out. The entire thing is custom made. So yes, um, we would support and correct that ankle varus. We would make sure to, to get you as straight as we can. Um, so yeah, I'm not the you know, that typical CBRA or CMT presentation is not a problem for C-brace within an extent, of course, but um, typically it's not a problem. Um, I mentioned a tango joint for an ankle. So the tango joint is just a, a type of joint that has some energy storage, energy return characteristics to it. Um, it's just a it's kind of a name brand of a, an ankle joint. Um, so, during your evaluation, we would determine if that's the appropriate ankle joint for you or not, if you need that type and level of support. Um, and then shoe choices, definitely, that's a, that's a big one, right? Um, the brace does take up room in a shoe. Yes, anybody that's ever worn a brace, myself included, um, shoes is always a challenge, right? Um, the best thing I can say is, find the shoes that work for you and, and those are the shoes that you wear um, you know we definitely recommend laces um, definitely recommend something that you can open up and get into and cinch back down to kind of hold your foot in place on the brace um, and, and yeah that's that's the challenging one I, i've been struck with that one myself so um, next question was can a veteran get a sea race absolutely yeah the the Veterans Administration, the Department of Defense, so active duty military personnel, um, the, the Veterans Administration and DOD have been very supportive of the sea brace. Um, so definitely if you are a veteran and you feel like you have weakness on those you know, front sides of your leg, that's definitely an option to go to the VA and, and see about getting sea braces. They've been very supportive of it, in fact. Um, next question was, I have complex scoliosis where my body leans to one side. Would there be two braces, the right side where I lean, push me more towards center? Um, so with the scoliosis, it's not going to push in on anything above the hip joint and scoliosis occurs above the hip joint. So unfortunately, it wouldn't be able to push you um, up above that hip joint. So um, it probably wouldn't do a whole lot for that pushing you towards center. Um, there are some other devices out there um, that do treat that complex scoliosis a little bit better, um, more of a back orthosis, back brace type of device. Um, so again, you could talk to an orthotist about that. Um, and then the next question was, so this is kind of like my AFO, but goes up almost to my hip and gives more support through the knee. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Um, you know, so the C brace definitely can support and control your ankle, just like an AFO would. Uh, but this is actually intended and meant more so for um, supporting your knees. So if your knees are buckling or you're really unsteady and, and you're falling down or, or perhaps catching your toes a lot and, and falling, um, C brace might be beneficial to you. Um, so yeah, anything that an AFO can do, the C brace can do. Um, plus then it adds that next level of support to the knee. And then how long does it take to get the C-brace? So getting a C-brace is, is quite a process. Um, you know, certainly we want to do the a thorough evaluation and do that trial. Um, and then, you know, if we determine that, yes, everyone agrees, you're a good candidate and, and we should proceed, we would take a cast of your leg. Um, we send that to our fabrication facility. They send back a test orthosis, typically within about two weeks. Um, we fit that test orthosis, and then we send that off to our fabrication facility again, and they would actually fabricate the definitive device. And then that typically takes about three weeks or four weeks. Um, so typically from start to finish, you know, you're looking at a month, couple month process. Um, and then at the end of that couple month process is where the work begins, right? That's where therapy begins and you actually start using the device and learning how to use the C-brace. Um, can a post-polio patient use a C-brace? Yes, actually, um, if you remember that first side-by-side -side video that I showed uh, the gentleman in the black shirt, he is actually a post-polio patient. Um, and so definitely post-polio patients can benefit from the C-brace. And does the C-brace stop knee hyperextension? Yes. So knee hyperextension, again, I said is kind of our friend. Um, not that I would wish it on anyone, but it, when you're using a C-brace, it does actually help make it a little bit easier to use if your knee does hyperextend a little bit. Um, but certainly the, the joint and brace will stop your knee from hyperextending and, and preventing, potentially preventing some more you know, damage that might happen to that backside of your knee if you hyperextend all the time. Um, and then does the C-brace have use in EDS or um, HEDS? So yeah, um, certainly with EDS, uh, certainly the C-brace can provide some benefits. Um, so yes, if you have CMT and EDS or just EDS, um, and, and you're hyperextending or um, finding that your knee is buckling on you, um, C-brace can help in those situations, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Lots of great questions out there. Appreciate this, everyone. This has been fun. This is my first Facebook Live event as well. So joined the CMT Association on, on their first one. Um, can you fly with a sea race? Yes, uh, you certainly can fly with a sea race. I know that for a fact. I've done it, um, and you, you know, you might have to spend a little bit of extra time, maybe a couple extra minutes at TSA, because um, they do want to, you know, swab it and make sure that you know it's it's kosher to fly. But um, from their perspective, but certainly we have many patients who have flown many times with the sea race. Um, can I wear this with progressive CMT? And that, that's a great question. And I kind of go back to the MS question as well, right? And that's why I would really want you to talk to your orthotist about, um, you know, where you're at with your progression, where you've been with your progression and, and where we think you might be going with your progression. Um, because again, it's a, it's a couple of month process to get a C-brace and then it's a couple of month process to really learn how to use it. And it can be a couple of month process to, to really learn how to use it. Um, so we would, we would hate for you to, to do all of that work just to have progressed to a point where maybe you weren't a candidate for a C-brace anymore. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, you know, and that, that's where I would really recommend you talk to your orthotist about, um, you know, where, where your progression is and, and where we're expecting it to go. Sounds like we got a, quite a few thank yous out there. I, I would definitely like to thank everyone that, that joined us tonight. Um, it was really, really a great event. Uh, certainly glad. Like to thank the CMT Association for inviting us to do that. Um, definitely was was a benefit to us, and, and um, yeah, it was great.
Oh, thank you, Ted. Yes, we're getting to uh, close to the top of the hour here. Uh, so many great questions yeah. uh, from the community and really, truly appreciate you taking the time this evening and getting on and being part of our community and answering all of their questions. So um, with that, if anybody else has any more questions, uh, for Ted or for the CMTA, please feel free to email uh, me, um, Gina, J-E-A-N-A, at cmtausa.org, and then I can send them over to Ted, and I'm sure that he would be uh, very happy to, to answer more of your questions. Um, and also, please like this, uh, this presentation, share this uh, presentation. Um, and, you know, send some stars if you'd like, um, and uh, two, if you'd like the, uh, the CMTA, we will be putting a recording of this presentation on YouTube, uh, which you can find it there. Um, and also, one quick note, mark your calendar, the CMTA is having a patient uh, summit on October 1st, and if you're interested in that, you can go to our website or email me and we will get you over that information. So um, thank you again, Ted, and thank you all for, for joining uh, this very first Facebook Live. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.